Yay! Yay! Hey everyone, uh, let's do a quick example of this powerful concept called conservation of energy. Um, what we have is sort of an old example, it looks like, uh, just a mass on an inclined plane. What we want to know is, uh, how fast is the mass going at the bottom? How fast at the bottom? Okay, um, the old way to do this, if you want, um, is you could figure out the acceleration down the plane, right, by summing the forces in the x and y direction, um, make your x direction go down the plane. Uh, we did this a while back. So figure out your acceleration down the plane, how long the plane is, right? How That's the distance over which it accelerates. Um, oh, you would want to know, uh, you, you'd have to figure out the time, right? So there might be a couple of kinematic equations involved um, to figure out how long it's undergoing that acceleration. And then you could figure out the, the velocity uh, at the end. Um, that's fine. You could do it. You could do it the old way. No problem. But using conservation of energy is powerful um, here because you can do it really, really fast. Okay, here's what I mean. We already know what the initial energy is. Remember what the conservation of energy says is that the initial energy ought to be the same as the final energy. So the initial energy is just potential. U initial plus K initial. Let's write out all the terms just so we can make sure we got it. This should be U final plus K final, right? So, so far, those are all the different kinds of energy that we could have. So initially we could have kinetic and potential. And then finally we could have kinetic and potential. Okay. Um, let's suppose it starts from rest. So the initial energy, uh, there is no kinetic. So that's zero. And finally, when it hits the bottom, uh, it has no potential, right? We'll call the ground potential zero. So that's zero. So what we know is the initial potential energy is just all turned into kinetic at the bottom. So that means that mgh is just equal to one half mv squared. Nice. As you would expect from what we had done before, the mass doesn't matter. That cancels out. So look, this means the speed at the bottom is just equal to square root of 2gh. That's a result. As you go through more physics, you're going to see that result over and over and over again. That's worth maybe that end result is worth just putting in your head that if something is falling, uh, its speed after it falls a height h, its speed is just root 2gh. Um, that's 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 probably worth just memorizing and sticking in your head. It's it's really useful to remember. Um, nowhere in here does it talk about the inclined plane, right? It, it, there's no angle. There's no angle in there because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the angle is. Notice th there's no. It, it only depends on the height. So if the plane is frictionless, we we haven't said anything about friction. If the plane is frictionless, it doesn't make any difference if it looks like this, a really steep slope, or if it looks like this a really shallow slope. It doesn't make any difference. Um, the speed at the bottom is going to be the same in either case. In the shallow case, it just takes a long time to build up to that final speed. And then in the steep case, you get to that speed really quick. Notice, I, I'm not saying that you would get to the bottom in the same amount of time in either case. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying at the bottom, whenever you get there, your speeds are going to be the same. The speed only depends on the height. That's kind of neat. Um, so in this case, if uh, if H is like you know, uh, five meters, if you fall from a height of five meters, for example, so it could be just falling straight down. If you fall from a height of five meters, uh, what is that? Your speed is going to be what's good? two times G that's 20 times five is a hundred or a hundred is 10. 10 meters per second. All right. That's how fast. What's that? 22 miles an hour. Uh, you double it and add 10%. So um, if you fall from what's five meters, 16 feet, so a couple stories. So if you fall from a couple stories up, you're going to hit the ground at um, about 22 miles an hour. Um, that's, that's that's pretty fast. Um, injuriously fast. Okay, uh, let's do something. Let's include something um, that would make it even harder in the, in the uh, uh, Newtonian, the forces sense. What if there's friction? What if I say... That mu is 0.4, so it's a rough plane, so it's sliding down 
uh, on a rough plane. Okay, well then, instead of adding up the forces together, here's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna say that the initial energy is no longer equal to the final energy because what happens is that as it slides down the plane, you are losing energy, right? We put our little quotes around that. We're losing energy, We're not, not really, if you account for all the frictional heat and all that. But from this system, um, we're gonna lose energy out of the system due to friction. So what happens is that you have this total amount of energy at the beginning, and at the end, you'll have a final amount of energy that will just be kinetic, right? No potential on the ground. So we'll just, have a final amount of energy that's just kinetic. And then what happened to the rest? The rest must be the work done by friction, right? That's how we account for it. So what we're interested in is E final is just going to be the amount of energy we had initially minus what was stolen from us, right? The, by, by friction. So it's, I mean, a lot of this energy, it, it's like the conservation of lots of other things in life, like money. Right? In a transaction, you ought to have the conservation of money. It's the same amount of money in the system. It just changed hands from one person to another. But if someone steals it in the meantime, you don't have as much at the end as you did at the beginning. So um, those analogies are, are, are useful. Okay, so in this case, we'd have one half mv squared is equal to mgh minus, all right, the work done by friction. What work is done by friction? Um, well, it's the force due to friction times the distance that it goes. So let's put that together real quick. What is the force due to friction? The force due to friction, the magnitude is mu times n, right? So we're gonna have a mu. What is the normal force? Uh, if you look back at what we did before, maybe this is in your head already, the normal force on an inclined plane is just mg times cosine theta, right? So that's the n part. just so that makes sense. And then times, that's still just a force. I have to multiply it by the distance over which that force is applied, assuming that's constant the whole time. Uh, let's see, that's the distance down the plane. What's the, well, I didn't tell you the distance down the plane, but we can get it because that's just a right triangle. And so the distance, let's see, sine of theta is H over that distance. Um, so that distance is gonna be H over sine theta. So this is going to be h over sine theta. Uh, very cool. All right. So now we know all this stuff. Oh, I didn't tell you the angle. Suppose it's our standard 30 degrees. Now we know everything. We can put that stuff in. Um, I'm not just because I think it's useful. I'm not going to cancel m out of everything and get a final formula um, in just this time. I want to put the numbers in. Let's see what, just to illustrate the conservation aspect. Um, one FMB scare, what do we have init uh, uh, initially? Um, MGH, what is MGH? Uh, let's see, uh, a 10 times G, it's 100, uh, and then H is 5. So we start off with, let me just put the numbers in, 500 joules. That's our sort of energy budget. We start off with 500 joules. And then how much do we lose on the way down? If I multiply mu mg cos and theta times h over sine theta, uh, let's see, this is going to be 0.4 times mg is 100, so that's 40. Cos and, cos and theta, uh, cosine of 30 degrees is 0.866, h is 5, sine of theta is a half, right? So this term is 10. Uh, so that's 40 times 400 times 0.866, um, 346. Okay, you put in all your numbers and you're going to get 346. So we started out with 500 joules. Friction has taken 346 out of the system. So what are we left with? That's just kinetic, kinetic final. Uh, 500 minus 346, what is that? Uh, 154, 154, whoops. Who the heck is that character? 154 joules. Uh, neat. Okay, so that must be um, 1 half mv final squared. So v at the bottom is... Um, 
square root of, uh, what would that be? Two times 154 over 10. Um, three square root of 30 something is five and a half. Okay. So that'll be our final number then. Our speed at the bottom when there's friction is going to be five and a half meters per second. And then you look, does that make any kind of sense? Yeah, if there was no friction, we already figured out up here that it was going to be 10. So with friction, um, it kind of makes sense that we're going to be going uh, slower than that. Okay, so um, that's just sort of a, a brief overview of how to use this conservation of energy in, in pretty simple circumstances. But it's also really powerful. You don't have to do any X and Y summation of forces and so on. Um, we can just sort of leap to the conceptual framework, which is initial energy equals finals energy. And if there's friction, that's just energy taken out of the system. So we can account for that too. Um, so a lot of these problems become uh, uh, vastly more simple. All right, uh, more stuff coming up.